I discovered my wife's cheating. During quarantine, and was devastated. I divorced her, even when she didn't want it, and moved on with my life. I never imagined I'd be here sharing my story on Reddit, but life has a way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. I'm a 35-year-old guy married to Lizzie, 33, for seven years. We met during our sophomore year in college, both of us computer science majors with big dreams of making it in the tech world. I still remember the day we met. It was in the campus library, both of us cramming for a particularly brutal algorithms exam. Lizzie asked to borrow my notes, and we ended up studying together. One study session turned into many, and before long we were inseparable. We bonded over our shared love of coding, sci-fi movies, and terrible puns. After graduation, we both landed jobs at tech startups in the city and moved in together. Our relationship wasn't perfect, whose is, but we always managed to work through our issues. When Lizzie's mom was diagnosed with cancer three years into our relationship, I was there for her every step of the way. I held her hand during hospital visits, made sure she ate when she forgot to, and listened when she needed to vent. When her mom passed away a year later, it was a tough time for both of us, but it brought us closer together. We got married in a small ceremony in Lizzie's hometown, surrounded by friends and family. The first few years of marriage were great. We both advanced in our careers, bought a house in a nice suburban neighborhood, and started talking about having kids. We had our ups and downs, but I always thought we were solid. Then the pandemic hit, and everything changed. At first, quarantine wasn't so bad. We both worked from home, spent more time together, and even picked up new hobbies. I started learning to play guitar, fulfilling a lifelong dream of mine. Lizzie got into baking, filling our house with the smell of fresh bread and cookies. Our neighbor, Ross, 38, would sometimes drop by to chat over the fence or share some of his homegrown vegetables. He was a friendly guy, always ready with a joke or a helping hand. I never thought much of it at the time. As the weeks turned into months, I noticed Lizzie became more distant. She'd spend hours on her phone, always turning the screen away when I came near. When I asked about it, she'd say she was just browsing social media or playing games. I believed her because, well, what else was there to do during lockdown? I tried to keep our relationship strong. I planned date nights at home, cooking her favorite meals and setting up our living room like a fancy restaurant. I even attempted to bake her a birthday cake. It was a disaster, but she laughed and we ate it anyway. Despite my efforts, Lizzie seemed to withdraw more and more. One day, about four months into quarantine, I woke up early and noticed Lizzie wasn't in bed. I figured she might be in the kitchen, so I went downstairs. The house was empty. I looked out the window and saw her coming out of Ross's house, still in her pajamas. When she came back, I asked her about it. She said she'd just gone to borrow some sugar for her baking. It seemed odd, but I didn't want to be paranoid, so I let it go. But things kept nagging at me. Lizzie was spending more time on her phone, taking calls in another room, and seemed irritated whenever I tried to spend time with her. I started noticing other things too, like how she'd perk up whenever Ross was outside, or how she'd make excuses to go check the mail multiple times a day. I didn't want to believe it, but the signs were all there. One night, I couldn't sleep and decided to check our phone bill. That's when I saw hundreds of texts and calls between Lizzie and Ross, often late at night or early in the morning. My heart sank. The next day, I confronted Lizzie. She denied everything at first, but when I showed her the phone records, she broke down. She admitted to having an affair with Ross for the past three months. She said she felt lonely and trapped during quarantine, and Ross had been there to listen. She swore it was just emotional at first, but eventually became physical. I was devastated. The woman I loved, the person I thought I'd spend my life with, had betrayed me in the worst way possible. And with our neighbor, of all people, someone I'd considered, a friend. I thought back to all the times we'd had Ross and his wife over for barbecues, how we'd helped them move in when they first arrived in the neighborhood. It made me feel sick. I told Lizzie I needed time to think and went to stay with my brother. Over the next few weeks, I did a lot of soul searching. I thought about our marriage, the good times we'd had, and whether I could ever trust her again. I remembered how we'd supported each other through tough times, like when I lost my job during the recession a few years back, and Lizzie had been my rock. Or when we went through a miscarriage two years ago, a painful experience that had brought us closer together. But then I'd think about her sneaking around with Ross, lying to my face day after day. I'd imagine them laughing at me behind my back, and it would make my blood boil. In the end, I realized I couldn't get past it. The trust was broken, and I couldn't see a way to rebuild it. 
When I returned home, I told Lizzie I wanted a divorce. She begged me to reconsider, saying it was a mistake and she'd do anything to make it right. She brought up all our history together, the plans we'd made for the future. But for me, the trust was broken. I couldn't imagine living next door to the man she'd cheated with, constantly wondering if it was still going on. I moved out and filed for divorce. Lizzie initially refused to sign the papers, insisting we could work it out. She suggested couples therapy, a trial separation, anything to avoid ending our marriage. But when I provided evidence of her infidelity, including the phone records and text messages I'd gathered, she finally agreed. Now, months later, the divorce is almost finalized. I'm living in a small apartment, trying to rebuild my life. Some of our mutual friends have taken sides, with a few suggesting I should have tried harder to save the marriage. They remind me of how Lizzie stood by me during tough times, like when my dad had a heart attack last year and I was a mess. But I don't think I'm the asshole here. I didn't break our vows or betray our trust. I'm just trying to move on with my life. It's not easy. There are days when I miss the life we had, the future we'd planned. We'd talked about having kids, buying a vacation home, growing old together. Now all of that is gone. Sometimes I lie awake at night, wondering if I'm making a mistake. But then I remember the betrayal, the lies, and I know I'm doing the right thing for me. So, Reddit, AITA for divorcing my wife after discovering her affair during quarantine. Update 1. It's been a few months since my original post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their support and advice. It really helped me during a difficult time. The divorce is now final. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad it's over. Lizzie tried to contest it at first, claiming that the affair was a one-time mistake brought on by the stress of quarantine. But when I presented the evidence, months of text messages, late-night calls, and even security camera footage of her entering and leaving Ross's house, she finally gave up. One thing I didn't mention in my original post was how this affected our wider circle of friends and family. When the news of Lizzie's affair got out, it was like a bomb went off in our social circle. Some friends took her side, saying that quarantine was hard on everyone and I should be more understanding. Others supported me, saying that nothing excuses cheating. My best friend from college, Tom, was particularly affected. He and his wife had been close with Lizzie and me, often double dating and vacationing together. When he found out about the affair, he was almost as hurt as I was. He felt betrayed, too, saying he couldn't believe Lizzie would do this to all of us. It's been tough on his marriage, too as his wife was friends with Lizzie and is having a hard time cutting her off completely. My parents were devastated. They had always loved Lizzie and treated her like a daughter. When I told them what happened, my mom cried for hours. My dad, who's usually a pretty stoic guy, looked like he'd aged 10 years overnight. They've been incredibly supportive, though. Mom calls me every day to check in, and Dad's been helping me look for a new place to live. Lizzie's family was a different story. Her parents were furious. Not at her, but at me. They accused me of abandoning their daughter when she made one little mistake. Her sister even called me, yelling that I was ruining Lizzie's life. I had to block their numbers for my own peace of mind. It's been particularly hard because I was close to Lizzie's family. Her dad had become like a second father to me, especially after we lost my father-in-law to cancer a few years ago. Losing that relationship has been another painful consequence of Lizzie's actions. As for Ross, he moved out of the neighborhood about a month after I filed for divorce. I heard through the grapevine that his wife found out about the affair too and kicked him out. Part of me feels sorry for her. She's as much a victim in this as I am. I ran into her at the grocery store last week. It was awkward at first, but we ended up talking for a while. She's struggling too, trying to explain to their kids why daddy doesn't live at home anymore. It made me grateful, in a weird way, that Lizzie and I didn't have children. Work has been a challenge. Lizzie and I work for different companies now, but we used to be at the same firm. When word got around about why we were divorcing, it made things awkward. Some co-workers avoided me like I had the plague, while others wanted all the gossip. I ended up switching departments to get away from it all. It's been tough starting over in a new team, especially with everything else going on, but it's better than the constant reminders of my failed marriage. On a personal level, I'm doing... Okay, some days are better than others. I've started seeing a therapist to work through my trust issues. It's hard to imagine being in another relationship right now. The thought of opening up to someone, being vulnerable again, is terrifying. But I'm taking it one day at a time. 
I've also reconnected with some old friends I'd lost touch with during my marriage. It's been great to have their support. We've been doing weekly game nights online, which has been a nice distraction. Last week, we played a virtual escape room game, and for a few hours, I forgot about all the drama in my life. As for Lizzie, I've gone no contact except for necessary communication about the divorce. Last I heard, she was still living in our old house. Sometimes I drive by and see her car in the driveway, and it feels surreal, like I'm looking at someone else's life. There are moments when I miss her, miss our life together. But then I remember the betrayal, and the pain comes rushing back. I'm still angry and hurt, but I'm also starting to feel hopeful about the future. For the first time in months, I'm excited about what comes next. I'm planning a solo trip once it's safe to travel again, something I've always wanted to do but never got around to. I'm thinking about hiking the Appalachian Trail or maybe backpacking through Europe. It's scary to think about doing these things alone, but also exhilarating. To those who asked if I regret my decision, no, I don't. It hurts, and it's not the future I imagined, but I know it was the right choice for me. I deserve someone who respects me and our relationship enough to be faithful. Thank you again for all your support, Reddit. It means more than you know. Update 2 It's been almost a year since my first post, and I wanted to give you all a final update. So much has changed, and I'm in a much better place now. First, the practical stuff. I've moved to a new city for a job opportunity. It's been great to have a fresh start somewhere without all the painful memories. My new co-workers don't know about my past, and it's refreshing to just be me instead of the guy whose wife cheated. The job itself is challenging, but rewarding. I'm working on a project developing AI for medical diagnostics, something I've always been passionate about. It feels good to be making a difference, even in a small way. The house Lizzie and I owned together finally sold. Splitting the proceeds was the last tie I had to her, and now that it's done, I feel like I can truly move on. I used my share to put a down payment on a small condo. It's the first place I've owned on my own, and even though it's not much, it feels like home. I've been slowly furnishing it, picking out each piece carefully. It's been therapeutic, in a way, creating a space that's entirely my own. I've been continuing with therapy, and it's helped a lot. I've worked through a lot of my anger and trust issues. Don't get me wrong, I still have moments where it all comes rushing back, but they're less frequent now. My therapist suggested I start journaling, which I was skeptical about at first, but it's actually been really helpful. Writing down my thoughts and feelings has helped me process everything that's happened. One unexpected outcome of this whole ordeal is that I've become closer to my brother. He was my rock during the worst of it, letting me crash at his place and listening to me rant for hours. Now, we talk almost every day and are planning a brother's road trip for next summer. We're thinking of driving down the Pacific Coast Highway, something we've talked about doing since we were kids. I've also rekindled my relationship with my college roommate, Alex. We had drifted apart over the years, mainly because Lizzie never really got along with him. Now I realize that might have been a red flag I missed. Alex and I have been catching up regularly, and it's been great to have that friendship back in my life. As for Lizzie, I haven't spoken to her in months. The last time was when we finalized the house sale. She tried to apologize again, said she'd made the biggest mistake of her life. I told her I forgave her, not for her sake, but for mine. Holding on to that anger wasn't doing me any good but I also made it clear that forgiveness doesn't mean reconciliation. We're done, and that's not changing. I heard through mutual friends that she and Ross tried to make a go of it after their respective divorces, but it didn't last. Apparently, the trust issues were too much to overcome. Can't say I'm surprised. Last I heard, Lizzie had moved back to her hometown to be closer to her family. Part of me hopes she's doing okay, but mostly, I'm just glad to have that chapter of my life closed. On a more positive note, I've started dating again. Nothing serious yet, but I've met some interesting people. I'm taking it slow, being upfront about my past and my boundaries. It's scary, but also exciting to feel those butterflies again. There's one woman, Ellie, who I've been seeing for a few weeks now. She's kind, funny, and understands my need to take things slow. We'll see where it goes, but for the first time in a long time, I'm feeling optimistic about the possibility of a relationship. I've also been focusing on personal growth. I finally finished that online guitar course I started during quarantine, and I've even written a few of my own songs. They're not great, but it's a good outlet for my emotions. I've also taken up rock climbing at a local gym. It's challenging and a great way to clear my head. My advice to anyone going through something similar, it gets better.
It might not feel like it now, but you will get through this. Surround yourself with people who support you. Don't be afraid to seek professional help, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. There were days when I could barely get out of bed, when the pain and betrayal felt overwhelming. But little by little, it got easier. Looking back, I don't regret my decision to end my marriage. Was it painful? Absolutely. There are still moments when I miss the life we had, the future we'd planned. But it also taught me a lot about myself, about resilience, and about what I really want in a partner and in life. To everyone who supported me through this journey, thank you. Your kind words and advice helped more than you know. I'm closing this chapter of my life now, but I'll always be grateful for the support I found here. Life isn't perfect. There are still tough days, still moments when the pain catches me off guard. But overall, I'm hopeful. I'm learning to trust again, to open myself up to new experiences and relationships. I don't know what the future holds, but for the first time in a long time, I'm excited to find out. Here's to new beginnings and better days ahead.